so love and rejoicing are also very closely connected. So, you know, when you love beings, you rejoice when they are happy or they do uh, have thing, good things happening to them. And, you know, they are moving closer to liberation or so on. Um, so that kind of rejoicing, that kind of joy, that kind of loving state is in itself, in a way, you're really connecting them into the sort of ultimate nature, which, as you know, is referred to as bliss, you know, in union with emptiness. So bliss is contains those sort of qualities of love, of joy, of compassion, but that that in itself without that dualism. So the bliss in a way is kind of that energy of love and joy and compassion and all of that beautiful sort of mental states um, of the Buddha nature. But obviously there's, there isn't that ego sort of dualistic side to it. And so in a way, maybe that's how it's different from love because it, it's more just the sort of being of being uh, rather than, I guess, you know, the more sort of dualistic notion. Bringing this also to, I'm really appreciating that we get a space today to clarify misunderstandings and and offer some <laughs> missions and in the Buddhist context. And in terms of bliss, emptiness, union versus ordinary union, mm-hmm. we also elaborate a little bit on that as we're bringing all these. Yes, topics. well, this is this is actually one of my favorite topics because and I think many people are very attracted to and interested in this topic right um so because you know what are we talking about when we talk about sort of union and when we talk about tantric union and um for example the deities are all pictured in this kind of unions actually sexual unions and so how does that interconnect with this sort of more profound idea of this emptiness so and this is where I think going back to your your initial question where you were talking about sort of romantic relationships how can they help us on the path to liberation well of course the tantric union which is uh, attempting to bring about within a union this sort of bliss emptiness is one of the most profound methods of love and liberation in a way that is available to us human beings on this planet. Um, and in that respect, it's it's a very precious thing. Um, but sadly, you know, it's because it's so prevalent, I guess, these days, um, there's a lot of misunderstanding about it and what it actually involves and who can do it. So in a way, you know, for someone to engage in a tantric union, there has to be, first of all, there has to be that sense of a lack of attachment and a genuine love if you're going to do it with a with a partner let's say um if you're going to attempt this then that would be kind of a basic minimum that you are not just i mean this is kind of where you know the idea of karma mudra or tantric union it can get misused in a way because although of course it can bring you into much higher states of bliss and orgasm on the other hand if there is attachment there and if it's being done predominantly for those reasons, um, again, the bad news is, is that although it can improve your relationship and in that way, sexually, it would be good for the relationship, let's say. But on the other hand, it's a technique which is really supposed to be used in the context of liberation. So if you're doing it really more to get a great orgasm, <laughs> which, you know, I'm not knocking, I mean, that, you know, of course, that is something that so many people would like. So many people's uh, sexual lives are not necessarily that satisfactory either, right? And they cannot uh, necessarily even reach an orgasm in a, in a relationship or a union with their partner, and they don't feel able to talk about that, you know, and they're not even in a culture where one would talk about that. 